Hi, yes, it's another dumpster dive. Well, not quite in the dumpster, but check out what I found. Um, I've already taken one of them, but uh, it is a HP ProLiant uh, Xeon um, server. So I've already uh, nabbed a smaller one, so I'm gonna grab that, whack it on my uh, trolley and head back to the lab. Let's go. See if it works. They've also thrown out some uh, uh, old uh, ADSL modems and uh, fast Ethernet uh, switches here. Don't really need those. And there's a couple of monitors over there as well. Little tiny VGA input only, 17-inch uh, one. So presumably they came from these uh, two PCs we have. So let's take it back, see if she works. And here they are, I got both of them. I didn't bother with the monitors. I've already got tons of monitors, as you can still see up the top there. And that's not even, oh, oh there we go. That's not even all of them. Um, it's just crazy. So yeah, I typically with the monitors now, I only take ones that have like a DVI uh, input. Those ones just, they were like 17 inch. They only had uh, standard VGA input. Oh, I got too many of them. Anyway, check out these babies. Um, I haven't pulled out um, a tower server like this before. I've only pulled out like some crust, crusty old uh, rack servers before. One of them I found an Intel uh, i7 in and these ones they're Intel Xeon. Check it out. Um, these ones are uh, actually capable of you can put in um, i3 and i7 uh, processors in these as well but uh, it's got the Xeon sticker so presumably it's got the uh, Xeon inside. This is a fairly high, these are fairly high-end um, HP ProLiant models and they're designed for like continuous server operation. These aren't regular uh, PCs. These are designed to run 24-7, properly designed, proper thermal management, you know, all the rest of it, um, unlike your regular PCs. So I've got, this is the Generation 6, G6. I've got an ML330 and I've got an ML, uh, the smaller ML110, which is more your regular uh, desktop size. And they're both a 6 Gen generation they're only two generations behind uh, they're current the pro lines are currently up to uh, generation 8 so not bad at all and uh, not sure what type of Xeon processors in them if there's anything I've had a quick look inside it looks like maybe the uh, processors are in there I'll show you those in a minute but uh, let's try and uh, power these puppies up and uh, see if they work I you know there's a damn good chance they will now I'll give you a quick look inside these things. I really love like the fact that these are pro models. Look at the uh, configuration uh, guide you get inside the thing. Really beautiful. I mean, it's got the entire uh, spec sheet on there and uh, all the bells and whistles to get you up and running. So fantastic. It's a bit, uh, bit crusty and uh, dirty inside, but um, yeah, there we go. We've got... Uh, two memory modules there so i assume that they're the um ecc uh type i haven't taken those out there um we have the original uh factory uh heat sink on it of course no one's gonna bother uh doing anything else here and it looks like there is a processor in there i can see it uh way up under there and it's got a you know a decent amount of uh pci slots down here so quite a usable machine as i said like 2012 vintage i think this is so uh hopefully it just powers up i mean they're throwing out both of them at the same time one says start me first one says start me second there's a little sticker on it and uh, so i presume that they've just upgraded so i'm i'm running at probably a uh you know, 80, 90% confidence level on these puppies that they'll work. No hard drives. I rarely find hard drives in these machines I get from the uh, dumpster. So yeah, uh, quite uncommon to find a hard drive. Or if you do, I've never found one with any data on it. They're always, you know, they're always being erased. So they at least know what they're doing there. And uh, on the back, it's got a nice little uh, compliant fan on there. It's got dual fans actually. And uh, one uh, Ethernet port, although it's labelled management, um, so I don't know whether or not it is actually an Ethernet. Uh, well, there's another management one down here. It's only got a you know crusty built-in uh, video just to get you up and running and get a uh, console, and because these are designed to run uh, Windows Server or uh, Linux Server or something like that. A couple of USBs and a serial port, but it's a nice compact chassis. So let's power this puppy up. All right, here we go. Monitors on. 
LEDs on on the front, so let's power that on. Start me second. Hmm, no thanks. We'll start you first. Whoa! Fan, it's loud. It is quite loud. Uh, not happy with that, but that oh, they often start up loud. I, yeah, there we go. It's uh, I've got nothing on the screen so far. Come on. Hey, look at that. HP Pro Lyant. Escape, it's obviously working. It's got a processor, the memory's working, and, uh, oh, ah, oh, damn, I'll have to restart that. It's not going to, uh, nah, it's just going to sit there, and uh, it does have a, I believe it has a RAID controller uh, built in. So, hey, there we go. Xeon 2.4 gig, doesn't say what type of Xeon we've got. So, let me get back into that. So there we go, we bias date uh, late 2011 there. It's got an Intel Xeon. Doesn't tell you which one. It's really uh, quite annoying, these uh, biases. They, they don't give you all the info, but it's most likely an XR2430, so, which is the typical one according to the uh, spec sheet for this model. So yeah, likely, you know, it's, it's a half reasonable Xeon processor in this thing, running at 2.4 gig. Now, one of the huge differences between one that, like a you know a proper name brand server uh, tower like these and just your regular consumer desktop um, is that these aren't designed to be overclocked. They're designed to have optimal uh, performance in terms of you know uh, bang per watt or uh, processing power per watt, you know MIPS per watt or whatever way you want to look at it, um, and to run 24/7 and do it ultra reliably. Anyway, we have uh, four gig of memory in it which is okay if it's uh um ec it's most likely uh ecc memory and uh well yeah we can't get too much out of this but uh it certainly works it's a winner as i expected so there you go i mean this is probably i could probably put this on ebay right now for probably if i couldn't get a couple of hundred bucks for this i don't think i'm trying so it's like you know tossing a couple hundred bucks cash into the bin so if that does have a Xeon 3430, as I uh, suspect it is, I'll either have to uh, take the heatsink out to physically take a look, or I'll have to uh, boot up Windows and get a uh, tool to identify it. Um, maybe I can like uh, burn a boot disk or something to identify it. I don't, you know, I don't work on these things every day, so I don't have uh, the tools readily available to identify these sorts of things. But anyway, that has a benchmark of around about uh, 3300. I know these benchmarks, you know, you take them with a grain of salt, but you know, basically one third of the speed of my i7, but it's gonna really depend upon what you're running with it. You know, if you're gaming or something like that, well, an overclocked, um, you know, core, um, in, Intel Core processor is, you know, going to be better. Maybe if you're doing some video rendering, um, uh, like something like a Xeon is actually going to be better in terms of uh, uh, processing power per watt. But ultimately, it's going to come down to uh, basically processor speed. So very similar architectures on the thing. The Xeon processors have a lot more built-in uh, cache memory uh, usually than the uh, Intel Core processors so um, that can be a very helpful thing depending on the application and things like that this is only a single core uh, main board I think the ML330 we're going to have a look at I think that is a uh, dual core capable machine so let's take a look at that one but this one's a winner all I got to do is get in there can of uh, air duster blow it all out and uh, should be as good as new I have no reason to doubt the reliability of this and the power supply these things are expensive really expensive top of the line machines uh, designed to run 24 7 and to do it reliably so I believe that they've just uh, tossed these out uh, because they're um, they're, they're superseded, they're upgraded, you know, they're a couple of years old, they've written them off on tax, and, uh, well, I have no, actually, um, I have practically no doubt that this, uh, uh 330 is going to, uh, power up and work first go to. And here we go, I've got the ultimate, uh, boot CD, and let's have a look at the, uh, CPU info. And there we go, we have, yep, an X, uh, 3430 at 2.4 gig. And this one is a real beast. I mean, check it out compared to the size of the uh, 110 model. I mean, it's much longer, a little, a fair bit higher, and uh, it's it's designed for more of those um, server applications. Got more drive bays, everything else. Real beast, this one. And check out the thermal guides on this thing. That's a real beast uh, of a channel. And check it out. Wow, look at the 
all the memory installed in that sucker, that's practically fully populated. Two, four, six SIM modules. Wow, awesome. This one, yeah, it is only a single processor. I think it, you can get a motherboard to make it into a dual uh, processor one, but yeah, this puppy's only single, but we've got uh, two fans in here. It's uh, quite, a, quite a beast and an absolute monster fan on the back but uh yeah once again uh lots of useful uh pci slots we've got an ati very tiny ati uh chipset uh down in there for the graphics by the looks of it uh as you know it's not it's just designed to get uh the machine up and running and for you to run uh you know basic windows on and everything else but yeah that's got a ton of memory wow and for those playing along at home we've got three sets of these two uh, modules here, and yeah, once again, uh, these are four gig um, memory. Yeah, ECC, no worries whatsoever. So, you know, really decent memory inside these puppies. So this one's a four gig uh, module, ECC, and this one looks like it's an eight gig module. I mean, you've got to decode the uh, numbers properly and all that sort of stuff, but wow. I mean, then we've got three eight gig modules and three four gig modules. Unbelievable. And for those wondering how they can get away with such a small, in quote marks, um, heatsink on the processor here, well, it's small by modern, ridiculous consumer, gamer, uh, you know, fanboy um, things with their liquid cool towers and all the, you know, whiz bang light up bloody fans and everything else. No, these Xeons are designed, as I said, to be more efficient uh, processes, give you better MIPS per watt. You don't overclock these things. All the thermal management in this thing is designed properly with the big uh, uh, air guide we uh, saw before to duct things correctly and everything else. And well, you know, you don't need an absolute monster in these things. They're running at 2.4 gig, very conservatively spec because they're designed to run 24-7. All right, here we go. As I said, probably 99% confident this puppy is going to work. So let's give it a bell. The lead's on here. Hey, there we go. Whoa! Whoa! That's like a, that's like a damn fighter jet taking off. That is insane. I can barely hear myself. It'll, it'll surely, it'll, uh... yeah, there we go. It's winding down. Whoa. Whoa. There we go. That's actually quite reasonable. Now we're getting nothing on our screen. Um, maybe it takes time. The other one took a bit. There's a green, like, a heartbeat light on the front. It's, well, it's green. It's solid, so I assume that's good. Oh, no, it's starting up again, so maybe it... Hey! Cursor. Cursor. That cursor's got to mean the processor's there. And working. Hey, there we go, it flashed. Flashed. Come on. Hey, HP Pro Lion. There we go. 2012. Hey, there we go, it's an E5620. 2.4 gig. This one's got a different bias. It shows you what's QPI speed. 5.8 uh, GT per second. Dynamic power saving, blah, blah, blah. ECC support, blah, blah, blah. F1, F19, setup. Wow, 36 gig. 30, there's our 36 gig. And it's got an E5620. And once again, this one has a RAID controller as well. Built in, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it's got no hard drive. It's got nothing. Romba F9 for Rombe setup. There we go. Yeah, this one's uh, quite significantly different to the other one, but it's uh, 2012 vintage and uh, absolute winner, winner, chicken dinner. And to get 36 gig memory in this thing, wow. Jeez, you know. Anyway, we can muck around till our heart's content in there. This one is a winner. Absolute winner. And once again, I have no... Um, a doubt really about the reliability of this thing uh, like you know power supply uh, motherboard caps you know everything else I really have little doubt I think they just tossed it because it's uh, you know it's they've written it off and they've upgraded
And the uh, E5620 in this thing just had a look at the uh, benchmark on that, and it's almost uh, 5,000 equivalent uh, benchmark, which is basically uh, the same as almost the same as the um, well, I think slightly better than the uh, Core i7s I found in the dumpster before. I found two previous uh, Core i7 machines, so this one's is at least equivalent to that. But hey, it's a Xeon, and if you have the um, uh, you know the software whatever to uh, uh, use this thing and making more efficient use of the Xeon processor than the uh, Core i7 then this is an absolute I mean this is an absolute winner machine I'm not going to keep it I don't you know it's absolutely huge I haven't got room in the lab here a lot of people say oh set up a file server on it and blah 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 do use it as a video rendering machine well I'm probably going to install my uh, I'll, I'll whack a hard drive in it get it up and running and actually run some video uh, benchmarks on the uh, Xeon here to see how it compares with my Core i7 but I don't expect it to uh, beat or match my uh, Intel my main video uh, rendering machine here which I've done a previous video on which I'll have to link in that's a um, Intel Core i7 uh, three and a half gig I think uh, three double seven O K slightly overclocked uh, version of that and it's a pretty decent machine so yeah, but this one, geez, I could probably, if I can't get at least maybe 300 bucks on eBay for this, then I'm not trying. I've probably got at least five or six hundred dollars worth of uh, machines here, perhaps. So, of course, you've got to find uh, buyers for them. They're not easy to ship, uh, something like this. So, you usually, if you're going to resell them on eBay, you've got to get, you know, find somebody who can come and pick them up, all that sort of jazz. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's fantastic it's got a this one's got a uh, certificate of uh, authenticity for what I think Windows uh, server or something like that I don't know I'm not familiar with Windows server never uh, used it but I think that's what it is and um, yeah but that's like throwing five or six hundred bucks into the dumpster really I mean they just couldn't be bothered reselling these on eBay just putting them up there and they could have easily gotten cash for these things and well there you go so that is an absolute winner dumpster dive to um a, you know pretty decent only two generations behind uh, hp pro light um six generation service fantastic hope you enjoyed it catch you next time